Cooper, away! A fiery horse with a speed of light. A cloud of dust and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. No one could match his strength and courage, his daring or resourcefulness. But it was the Lone Ranger's ability to judge character which made him the greatest champion of justice the West ever knew. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the Houston Ranch! Hello, Silver! Away! Vern Houston stood beside his father at the window of the Houston Ranch House. They watched young Brant Houston dismount outside. Then... Oh, you'd better let me talk to Brant first. You always get so mad likely didn't mean anything. I miss Paul. He'll explain to me. What is it? What's wrong? Quiet, Nora. But I, was... I said quiet. Why? Something's wrong and it concerns Brad. I have a right to know, haven't I? I'm his wife. Anything you need to know, you'll learn in good time. Just, same, Just wa- wait, Nora. Here's Brant now. Say, Paul, listen to this. Well? I found out something today you ought to be glad to know. Recollect your saying the other day you wished you knew where we could sell about a thousand head of two and three-year-olds in a hurry? Well, I've learned just the place. Oh, you yeah, have, man. Fort Stanwick. That's so. A fellow named Sweeney had the contract to supply the fort with beef, but his herd didn't come up to weight or quality. Most of it was turned back, and the soldiers need more just as fast as they can get it. What do you say we round up a thousand head or so and get them there before the word gets around? How'd that be, huh? Be a doggone nice sale, wouldn't it? Just where'd you get this information? Oh, uh, a stranger told me. he just come from there. A stranger, huh? Sure. Never seen him before. Matter of fact, don't even know his name. It was a straight tip, though. I could tell from what he said. Say... Hey, well, what's got into you? What are you looking so sour about? I thought this was just the news you was hankering to hear. You're sure that's all you and that masked fella talked about? Of course it was. He'd... Hey, how'd you know he was masked? We saw you talking to him, Brent. Paul and me had been over to the line cabin up on the ridge. Yeah? Well, why didn't you call out? We weren't so sure you'd uh, want to be disturbed. We weren't sure we... Now, just what does that mean? What do you suppose it means? You... You mean you think there was something wrong in me talking to him because he was masked? You don't think there was, huh? Don't talk foolish, Paul. Why should I? I'll tell you. I've always figured a man's judged by the company he keeps. If he associates with outlaws... Outlaws? And... Now, Paul, act reasonable. Who's associating with outlaws? All I did was pull up when he hailed me. I'll thank you not to use that tone of voice with me and to recollect I'm your father. But, golly, Paul... He I... put you up to suggesting I send out a trail herd, huh? He didn't suggest nothing. He just told me about the fort needing cattle. The rest was my idea. Knowing how you said you wanted to thin out our herd some. <laughs> Looks like he didn't have to suggest it. Looks like it had you sized up for a simpleton right off the bat. I don't have he to be... He tells you the fort needs beef. So 
So you come running to me to repeat it. Then I send out a thousand head of prime steers, and when they've got past Laramie, him and his pards run them off into the hills. <laughs> It'd be mighty obliging of me. Mighty obliging of you, too, to talk me into it. You haven't any right to talk to Brent that way. Oh, I haven't, eh? Does he own this ranch? Is it his beef he's so anxious to hand over to crooks? You, you're impossible. Gosh, Nora. But, Brent, it makes me just sick. It's always this way. Everything you do is turned and twisted to put you in the wrong. You work twice as hard as anyone on this ranch and never get the least bit of credit. If if you were a man, you wouldn't stand for it. Laura, please. Brent, I ain't so sure but what she's right. Huh? I reckon a fellow with all your talents is kind of out of place tied down like you've been. Maybe you better branch out some. Go where folks got the sense to appreciate you. Oh, cut it out. I never said that. Laura didn't mean it either. What's the use of us quarreling all the time? I'm I... not fighting. I'm being as reasonable as I know how. Reasonable? <laughs> but I think it wouldn't hurt if you was to take your wife's suggestion. Now, hold on. Well, what have you to say? Oh, I'll think this over for a bit. You'll be sorry afterwards. You know you will. We can just forget all this for now and sleep on it, and in the morning... Thanks, we... Vern, but that won't do. But Paul and I never have got along together. Well, it's nobody's fault, I reckon. Mm. It's just that we're made that way. I've been hanging on, hoping things would change. But this has kind of woke me up. I guess they won't. Guess they can't. So maybe it'd be better all the way around if me and Nora was to pull stakes, like Paul says. Brand, this is what I've wanted you to do ever since we were married. Uh-huh, I've noted that. So you're given notice, eh, son? We'll leave just as soon as we can get everything straightened up. It'll be in a day or two, I reckon. Unless, of course, there's something you need me for. There is, isn't it? Oh, all right. You can figure on us leaving day after tomorrow, then. I'm sorry about this, Brent. Oh, forget it, Vern. But uh, where will you and Nora go? Oh, I don't know. Murray County, maybe. Plenty of good range over that way. We can buy ourselves a little spread. What with? You got money saved? Some. Ain't you going to give me any? Why should I? Why? Well, there's no reason why you should have to, I guess. But after all, when Vern wanted to set up for himself that time... I helped him and he went bust. My money ain't going to go that way a second time. That's not fair. You give Vern money, Nora, but you... don't. I it's don't Paul's pay. money. We ain't got no claim on it. He's been paying me wages and... Well, we've saved a little. We can get by. Come on. I reckon we better get some sleep. Tomorrow we're going to be plenty busy. Mm-hmm. I suppose we will be. Night, Vern. Night, fellow. Night, Paul. Good night. Paul. Ma'am? I know you and Brandt will never get along, so I'm not saying a word again he's leaving. But if you could see your way clear to at least loaning him just a little care. No. But, Paul... Vern, your brother's got to the point where he thinks he's a smarter man than he's Paul. Well, now he's got his chance to prove it. And he'll do it on his own. <laughs> Two days later, with all their possessions loaded in a buggy, Brandon and his wife drove away from the ranch house. It was an unhappy moment for both of them, and during the first few miles of their journey, not a word was spoken. Brandt finally broke the silence. Seems awful funny, Nora, leaving here. Can't hardly believe I am. Look, there's a place I rode my first horse. See that brush patch? That's where the doggone critter threw me. Don't feel badly, Brandon. Huh? Feel bad? Well, I should say I don't. We're young. Got a whole lifetime ahead of us. Shucks, I'll admit I was kind of, well, attached to the place. Sure, who wouldn't be raised on it like I was? But that don't mean I can't ever be contented somewhere else. I know. Brent! We'll get some... Brent, wait. What? Well, that must be that masked man your father mentioned. Well, I'll be... Do... There's an engine with him. Uh-huh. He was along the other day. Over! Hi there! Oh, boy. Oh, 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 that's a bit. Oh, 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 Well, so you fellas are still staying around, eh? We stayed at first to see if you'd do anything about that trail herd I told you. You should send to Fort Stanwick. Oh, well, you see, Paul... Then we'd heard about what had happened. I'm sorry, Brent. I feel that somehow I'm to blame. <laughs> News sure travels, don't it? It does. Well, don't you go to blaming yourself. If this hadn't come up now, it would have later. And you weren't trying to do anything but a good turn. Your father could sell a thousand head or so. Sure, I know it. But he won't. He figured you was just up to some kind of a trick. I've been told you're heading for Murray County. Yeah. Know that country, do you? From one end to the other. That's why I stopped you. Huh? I don't suppose you have much money. Money? <laughs> well, 
About enough to get us there and buy us a shack and a dozen head of cows or so. Why? I said I feel partly responsible for this. Oh, you shouldn't. And I wish to help you. Yeah? When you and your wife reach Murray County, keep going until you get to Red Lake. At Red Lake, ask how to reach Dan Bradley's place. Anyone can tell you. He has the biggest ranch in the district. And then? Tell him how much money you have and that you want to go into ranching for yourself. Tell him a masked man with an Indian friend named Tonto sent you. You'll be treated right, Brant. That's all open range in there, and Dan will trust you for all the stock you'll need and see to it that you get off to a good start. Oh, Brant, that's wonderful. Uh-huh. But wait a second. Stranger, what kind of a gent is this Dan Bradley? There isn't a more honest man in the state. You'll learn that when you get there. I don't want you to take offense, but I just aim to make sure. If he's a crook, I guess me and Nora can make out without his help. You think Tonto and I are outlaws, huh? Well, ain't you? We're not. And why are you If you wear... wish to ask questions, ask them of Dan. Perhaps you'll believe him where you wouldn't believe me. I'll do that. And stranger? Yes? Whether I cotton to Bradley or not, I'm thanking you for wanting to help. You'd better get going. Uh-huh. Reckon so. Adios, Brent, and good luck. So long. Get up, Tyler. Get along, boy. Get up. Tyler. Uh. They say Brent and his father simply couldn't get along together. Uh. Me hear him talk. But I wonder if there wasn't more to it than that. What you mean? Mean? Tonto, I'm not certain myself. Come back to camp. Uh, get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Hello, Silver. Away! When Brant and Nora reached Murray County, they introduced themselves to Dan Bradley and explained that the masked man had sent them. Bradley gave them a welcome beyond anything they'd expected. A snug cabin was found, they were sold cattle on generous terms, and even after they were settled in their new home, they could hardly believe in their good fortune. Oh, wrap those and we'll be finished, and I think I'll sweep out. I... Brent. <laughs> Brent, are you sound asleep? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Try that saucer before you break it. Oh, sure. I guess I was dreaming. Well, I guess you were. But you know, honey, I just can't seem to help it. Gosh, every time I think of that masked man being a lone ranger, I just have to stop whatever I'm doing and start thanking my lucky stars. Isn't it grand? He's really somebody to know, ain't he, Nora? Look at how he went out of his way to send us to Mr. Bradley. Who else would care what happened to us? Not many people, Brent. I should hope this smile ain't. And Mr. Bradley. Don't you like that old fella, honey? How could I help it? Give us this cabin and all them cattle and wouldn't take a penny of our cash. Said we need it for other things and we could pay him later. <laughs> I'll bet he wouldn't say a word if we never paid him. Oh, but we will. Sure we will. Just as quick as we can. I just meant he'd never holler if we didn't. You, you know what I like best about him, Brent? Huh? What's that? All the stories he knows about the Lone Ranger. He can tell them by the hour. <laughs> sure can, can he? Well, I don't blame him. He owes that fellow as much as we do. Yeah, he told me. Brent. Yeah? Do you... Do you ever get homesick? You feel as if maybe you'd like oh, to... Oh, gosh, that reminds me. What? Just a second. Something here I almost forgot. Stuck it in my pocket when I was in town and never thought of it again until you mentioned home just now. Here. What do you think of this? A, a letter, Brand, but, but who's it from? Paul, I guess. Looks like his writing on the outside. I never opened it. I was waiting till I got back. Hurry, Brand, read it. Oh, that's funny. No letter... Just this inside. What is it? Leaping catfish, honey. This is a check from Pa for $5,000. $5,000? Just what he gave Vern that time. But why didn't he write? Why didn't he send a note with it or something? <laughs> I don't... You don't know Pa like I do. <laughs> this don't surprise me at all. Just like him. He's been thinking over what happened, and this is his way of telling us he's kind of ashamed of himself. You, uh, you'll keep it? Keep it? Well, I should say I will. Pa would be hurt if I didn't. Well... After all, it isn't any more than your brother got. Oh, I wasn't thinking of it that way. You know what I'm going to do with this, honey? What, Brad? Get Mr. Bradley to vouch for me and get it cashed in town. And then pay him off. Why, we'll own everything free and clear. Do it tomorrow. Sure. And tonight? Yes. We're sitting down and writing Pa a letter of thanks. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you.
Now to continue our story. After Brandt had acknowledged his father's check, several weeks passed. Both he and Nora worked hard and felt confident of the future. But one day, Tonto brought the Lone Ranger some startling news. You are certain of that, Kimosabe? Ah. And word's already been sent to the sheriff of Murray County. That's right. Here, Silver. Now, what we do? We're riding to Murray County to warn Brent. Ah. We're riding day and night. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry. <laughs> desperate race against time began. Hour after hour, day after day, stopping only to rest their horses, the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed for Murray County. Five days, six days. Then on the morning of the 7th... This is the place, Tonto. Rain up! Uh, oh, 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 yeah, oh, 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 it's the mask man and Tonto. Tell him to come in. We... Oh, wait. But what's the matter? Brent, we have a minute to spare. Look up the trail there. What? That's the sheriff. He's coming here to arrest you. Oh, no. Arrest me? But what in the... Let me talk before he gets here. Brent, you cashed a check a while ago for $5,000. Sure, but there was nothing wrong in that. Paul keeps five times that much in the bank all the time. But your father didn't write that check, did what? he? It was a forgery. It couldn't have been. Why, I know my pa's handwriting as good as I know my own. Nevertheless, there's no mistake about it. It was a forgery. Your father sent a complaint to the sheriff. And is on his way here now by stage with your brother. They'll reach Red Lake in a couple of days. But I don't understand. We wrote Brant's father and thanked him for the check. He should know we'd ever do a thing like that if we'd stolen from him. You wrote him? The day the check came. Tonto, do you hear that? Did you hear of any such letter? No. You're not here. Oh, but we did. The sheriff's turning off the trail. Listen closely and don't interrupt. I believe you're innocent, Brant. I'm going to do everything in my power to prove it. Oh, thank heaven. But I work in my own way. Whatever I do, play up to it. Don't show surprise. Right. Yep. And throw up your hands. What in thunder? Up with your hands before I drill you. Quick, man. Oh, oh, yeah. Here's a man, Sheriff. Hold on to the skunk. You can take over. How'd you happen to know I was after him, stranger? I... My golly, you're mad. Thank you, prisoner. But you... Take him. Does it make any difference whether he was captured by a masked man or not? No, but... Uh... And there's no law against wearing a mask. I wouldn't advise you to try arresting me with him. Mm, this is a kind of funny situation. Reckon there ain't no law at that. Uh... Handcuff this fellow. Yeah. Hold out your hands, young fella. Uh, guess that'll hold you. <laughs> Stranger, guess I'm beholden to you at that. I was a mite uneasy thinking maybe this fella wouldn't give up without a fight. You saved me that. He'll make you no trouble. <laughs> he sure won't now. Uh, but you ain't explained yet how you happen to know he was wanted. We knew about it before you did. We just arrived from the district where his father has a ranch. Oh. And Dan Bradley is a good friend of ours. We knew Dan had befriended this fellow. We wanted him before he could make his getaway. Oh, that explains it. Well, young fella, I see your horse is saddled. Climb aboard and let's get started. Bye, honey. Brent. No, Nora. Take him away, Sheriff. Come along. Your wife can visit you in the calaboose. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Get up. Mrs. Houston, you needn't cry. Brad isn't a thief. He, he isn't. Of course he isn't. But, but they're putting him in jail. The Sheriff will put him in jail, Mrs. Houston, and I had to help send him there. Why? But you can believe this. He'll be out again in a matter of days. Later, when the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp... You got plan? Tonto, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Not good. When it's dark, I'm calling on the sheriff. Ah. I helped him capture Brent. I mentioned that Dan Bradley's our friend. Ah. I think he'll listen to what I have to say. At 12 o'clock that night, the sheriff was aroused by someone knocking at the door of his home... A moment later, he was unlocking the door. And then... What in blazes? Hey. Sheriff, you're going to hear what I have to say. You'll find it's important. Well, what in... You have Brant Houston in jail. Sure, but... I turned him over to you. I ain't denying it. Now I'm going to explain how I intend to prove that Brant is not guilty. Huh? I've already been to see Dan Bradley. He's agreed to help. You sent him to jail and now you're claiming you shouldn't have? Nothing of the sort. You received a complaint and he had to go to jail. For the present... He's as well off there as anywhere. I don't savvy. You don't have to. Just do as I tell you. You'll find it won't interfere with your duty as a lawman. 
If you hesitate because I'm masked, call on Bradley tomorrow. You mean you're really a friend of his? We leave it up to him. Do as he tells you. Cooperate with me or not, just as he advises. Well, that sounds fair enough. It is. And if he says you're on the square, I should do like you say? It'll be nothing difficult. Right. Brant's father and brother will arrive in town the day after tomorrow by stage. Uh-huh. The stage reaches town in the evening. Without a doubt, they'll call at your office at once and ask to see Brant. Sure. I'll enter while they're there. A mask like this? No, but I'll be disguised. You'll know it's me because I'll suggest a way to clinch the case against Brant. Say, you loco... One second you say he ain't guilty, the next you're just the same as say he is. Now, Never what... mind that. I just want you to understand one thing. Yeah, what's that? That when I show up, you fall in with whatever suggestion I may make. You can explain that you've discussed the case with me, which you have. But I... And that's all. You can look for me in two days. Adios. <laughs> Grant's father and brother arrived in Red Lake on schedule. And just as the Lone Ranger had prophesied, they hurried to the sheriff's office at once and asked to see Brant. The sheriff led them to his cell. Face to face with his younger son, old Mort Houston delivered an ultimatum. But listen, Paul. Keep still. If you think you can trade on the fact you're my son to go free, you'll find I'm not that easy. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. My being your paw makes what you've done all the worse. Burn. You believe I'm guilty? Brant, I don't, and I've told Pa so. I know doggone well this is just a mistake that can be cleared up. Thanks, Vern. I'm appreciating that. A mistake? <laughs> you just signed my name to a check for $5,000 by a mistake. Now, Pa, I didn't mean it just that way. All I meant was Because, Brant... Brant, your brother, you feel you have to defend him. Well, I promise you he'll pay. Brant, there's just one thing I'm thankful for. Huh? That your ma didn't live to see her son turn into a thief. Now, wait, Pa. You haven't been willing to listen to a thing I say. That check came through the mails, and the minute we learned what it was, me and Nora sat down and wrote you a letter of thanks. Does that sound like we'd forged the check? I received no such letter. Well, we wrote it. If you had, I'd have got it. But it don't matter one way or the other. I'm not going to... Sheriff? Yeah? There's a stranger in the office. Claims you and him was talking the other night about that hombre. You got locked up. Says he thought of a way you can get all the evidence against him you'll need. Huh? Oh, yeah. Send him back here. Sheriff says it's all right, mister. Thanks. Good evening, Sheriff. Uh, howdy. Who's this feller? I... He... You're Mort Houston? I am. And you should be interested in what you heard the deputy say. Mister, who, who are you? Your, your voice. I've heard it somewhere before. I know I have. Maybe. Well, Sheriff, do you mind if I make a suggestion? Go right ahead. Houston, was your signature on that forged check a good copy? It was that, all right. If I hadn't known for sure I never writ any such check, I might have mistook it for the real thing. Good. Then you must realize that no one could imitate your signature that well without having practiced it. Huh? You most likely never heard of him, Houston, but Bradley is Brant's friend. Bradley has influence in this county. You want to see your son convicted? You'll need every bit of evidence you can find to show in court. Uh, what do you mean? Just this. If Brant was stupid enough to remain here after cashing that check, knowing that sooner or later he'd be arrested, he's stupid enough not to have destroyed the paper or papers on which your signature was practiced. My thunder, that... Mister, you got something there. It's too late and too dark to do anything about it tonight. But I'd suggest that you ride to Brant's place the first thing in the morning and search it thoroughly. The cabin, the barn, everywhere. It might pay you. We'll do that. Now, listen here, stranger. Well? I'm here to say Brant ain't guilty. You fellows can search from now till you're blue in the face and you won't find a thing that says he is. We'll see. Early the following morning, the sheriff, Byrne, and his father rode to Brant's new home. In spite of Nora's objection, they began a thorough search of the cabin. Mort Houston and the sheriff went over the rooms from top to bottom. But finally, the lawman was ready to admit defeat. Well, Houston, sure as sin, there's nothing hid inside here. If we've overlooked anything, I don't know what it is. He's likely destroyed them. What are you talking about? Sheriff, what have you been looking for? No, ma'am. I'm on the law's business and ain't allowed to talk out of turn. If you was to know, you might beat us to him. Houston, wonder how Vern's coming outside. Huh. He's so anxious to prove his brother ain't guilty, I wouldn't trust him to show us them papers if he did find them. Wait, here he comes. Hey, young fella. What are you looking so glum about? You look as though you just lost your best friend. I guess that's just about what's happened. Huh? Oh, well, son... I told you you was loco when you claimed Brant was guilty. I guess I kind of lost my temper and said some things that were sort of strong. Well, I'm apologizing. 
He fooled me completely. You found something? These. They'd been stuffed under some rubbish I guess he'd meant to burn, but hadn't. Stranger was right, Paul. See? He must have copied your signature over and over again a hundred times or more. No, it's a lie. Brent did no such thing. You're framing him. I won't have it. I won't... Now, ma'am, no use taking on. You can see the evidence for yourself. Oh, but I know it's a lie. It is. Oh, what's oh. that? Damn. Tell the sheriff in Houston the whole thing. Tell them what you and Tonto saw. Right here's the fellow you want. What are you talking about? Hey, he done just what the masked man figured he would. He come sneaking out here last night and hid them papers where he claimed to find them. Me and Tonto even followed him yesterday and seen him copy him out at the cafe. Watch out, Tonto. Why you need to oh, out. Hold him. Good work, Tonto. The game's up, man. We're trying to get away and heist your hands, Tonto. I'll fix you fellas for this. I'll show you. I'll get even. If you do, we'll be from behind bars. But I don't understand. Vern guilty. I don't see how Houston, that... I suspected Vern from the first. I have a good idea that he had more to do with the quarrels between you and Brant than either of you realized. Vern had attempted ranching on his own and had failed. Brant had remained to help you. Vern was afraid you'd leave your place to Brant and intended to make sure his brother got nothing. But it, it seems impossible. He sent the check knowing that Brant would take it for granted it was good. He also must have intercepted the letter Brant and Nora wrote thanking you. But, but you, who are you? Me? Dan here? <laughs> Mr. Houston, Dan ain't only the most important fellow around these parts, but he's a friend to your boy and to the Lone Ranger. The, the Lone Ranger? Heard of him? Well, <laughs> if you'll just take a look outside, you'll see him. I'll see the boy! The Mask Man. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>